my project is on food extrusion process of crispy starch based snacks. And my name is Fi. So, uh, so before I go into like the um, my uh, objective and rationale of the project, I want to explain you a bit about the typical food extrusion process. So this is a typical screw extruder schematic, and you can see that there's a hopper where you're gonna put um, certain types of materials, and that thing is gonna go into the barrel, and the barrel is gonna be hold it's gonna hold the screw, which is gonna rotate and according to the pressure distribution of the screw, it's gonna move the materials from this side to the die end. So this is actually for metal metal and polymer extrusion process. So that's why th there's a die. So for food extrusion process, um, when the extrusion product have come out, there's gonna be a knife to chop it off. Um, so typical processing parameters that you have to take care of when designing a food extrusion process is rotational speed of the screw, temperature of the barrel, and the feed rate of the materials that you're gonna put into the hopper. And besides that, um, there, are, there are many complex variables to be considered in screw design. So you can see that there's a um, pitch to be taken care of and also the shape, um, how it's um, oriented and the line of the screw and also the angle. Um, extrusion process for snacks is different from, maybe different from any other extrusion process. It has, a, it, it, it involves high temperature and short time process. Um, call it, so depending on the extrusion parameters that you apply, the different qualities can be there can be impact on qualities of the food. These are nutritional properties, solubility, hardness, texture, degree of cook. And I'm gonna be focusing more on um, texture because I wanna design a system to create, to manufacture crispy starch-based products. Um, there, there's a lot of need um, in the field of food extrusion process. Uh, the design, the current design systems only consider, um, only consider the specific types of food extrusion process. So, for example, if you are doing food extrusion on meat, then you have to follow such uh, screw design and such um, extrusion, uh, food extrusion process parameters to get that particular outcome. So, my my uh, my project objective is to. To, to design a system to be applicable to any type of um, s snack food. And, and there is also, in, this, in the society, there are more inclination towards healthy and delicious food. So you want crispy products, but you also want it to be, uh, to include uh, certain aspects of nutritional content and, and also you know, less fat and yeah, more healthier. And as you know, snacks are very popular now. People eat that every day, every time. So as I've mentioned, I, my objective is to design a food extrusion process from asymmetric design and to integrate manufacturing process parameters, extruder screw design, and raw material selection. That way you don't have to do the food extrusion process design over and over again, even though the materials have changed or even though you use a different screw design. Uh, so my first FR1 is to have large extruded ex expansion. So to explain that, um, I want crispy starch-based products. So to have it crispy, you have to be, uh, you ha it has to have a thin cell wall. So when you bite into it, it's, um, it has very, um, it has small hardness and it's gonna break down very easily. So, and you also need to have less apparent density, otherwise, um, the hardness is going to be greater and you're not going to be able to like break it down easily. So less apparent density, thinner cell wall, less hardness, and that's going to lead all of these into crispiness. So um, yeah, FR1 is basically large extruded expansion, which basically means all of these. And to, for FR1, I'm going to use independent um, process parameters to satisfy that FR1. Um, I'm going to talk more about it later, why I do that, because uh, my FR2 and FR3 
has to be designed first. And according to what I got from those FR2 and FR3, I can easily uh, adjust my FR1 because all of these are uh, totally independent. And my FR1 includes to lower feed rate, to lower water injection rate, to increase barrel temperature, to increase screw speed. All of these are going to be uh, computer controlled, and all of these are totally independent because you're just going to input how much you want to, how much you want to how much you want in that system. So why feed rate is important? Because feed rate is going to impact the degree of fill of screw, the, the degree of fill of screw of the materials. Ma materials. So if the, if, if the screw is very um, overloaded, the materials inside not, are not going to get uh, equal temperature distribution from the from the uh, from the system, so it's gonna impact the residence time, and since it's it could be overloaded, it's gonna also impact the hardness of the material. So you're gonna have to adjust your feed rate so that there's a um, a reasonable amount of distribution of materials in the screw, and every material is gonna getting the um, it's getting the heat distribution from the system and. Yeah, since they're not overloaded, it's not going to be um, super, it's not going to be stiff and hot. Another thing is water injection rate effects. Um, so I want to I lower water injection rate because I want to lower the uh, water um, moisture content. Because to have crispy rate based products, you want to take out the um, moisture. And another thing is viscosity. Viscosity will uh, so if you put too much water, it's going to increase the viscosity, uh, viscosity of the starch, and it's going to hold back the. So it's it's going to make the bubbles, bubbles. It's make um, you cannot. It's going to hold the materials together, so there cannot there there cannot be a lot of bubbles inside. So you want to reduce the water injection rate and. And one thing is because you want to increase the bubble growth because the bubble growth is proportional to the pressure inside that material. And uh, th these are measured by water solubility index and water absorption index. So water solubility index basically means um, the amount of the amount of uh, solids that is left after dissolving that solids into the water, and absorption is the other way, the amount that increases uh, when it, the solid emesses in the liquid. And spiral temperature is kind of correlated to water injection rate. Since the, if you increase the barrel temperature a lot, you're going to create uh, vapors inside that uh, material, and that's going to create bubbles. bubbles. So um, when I have water mixed with the materials and w when you increase the temperature suddenly the water is going to evaporate and it's going to create bubbles inside the starch based products so lowering the density and um, making it more crispy and and then screw speed because if you increase the screw speed it's going to increase the uh, residence time and that, that, that way, every product's going to be distributed equally in, in the barrel, and they're not going to accumulate in one place. So it, um, yeah, basically, it's trying to decrease the density of the product. Well, watch the time. Oh, OK. You're already yeah. Um, yeah, besides the d uh, DPs, uh, computer-aided control in the DBs, um, the other things that you could c improve the DPs are you can, cr uh, you can select more sensitive temperature and moisture sensors to control the right amount of temperature that you're going to be supplying and to control the amount of water feed rate that you're going to be supplying to the system. And SME is um, it's a very uh, common formula in food extrusion process. It controls the screw speed and it controls the power, and yeah. So if you have that thing, you can calculate this one. And so my FR2 is extruder selection. So it's um, first is process, and this one is extruder. So there are two types of extruder. 
a single and twin, twin, twin set excluder. And um, you also gonna have to determine uh, what kind of profiles you want in the screw. So that way it determines the pressure distribution inside the screw. And single extruder, it requires less control because it's just one, extru uh, one screw rotating. It's less cheaper. Um, and uh, here the example is the dry system. And the, so you're not gonna need any water to make it uh, into a dough. It's just a steam uh, making, creating, uh, it's just a steam uh, combining the materials together. And twin set, uh, twin screw extruder. So here you're gonna input, so here there's a, um, a valve into where you're gonna inject the water into the system. And this, this is where you're gonna heat up the system. So as you feed along and the screw is gonna carry along here and then this one is gonna heat up the system. And yeah, this is twin screw extruder. So you can see that this one this one has two extruders rotated in opposite directions, so it's more powerful, and it doesn't. Uh, you don't have to care about the type of material that you're gonna put into here because um, it's more powerful. So even though it is very viscous and very fatty, it's gonna because of the high power torque, it's gonna move it uh, move it farther. Um, yeah. So why that is important? Because when you are controlling the um, when you have different types of materials in your food extrusion process, choosing this twin screw extruder might be useful because you don't, because this one is very powerful and um, has uh, little relation with the type of food that you work uh, that you choose. And the last thing, raw material selection, um, I I could put that in a constraint section, but since this one impacts a lot of the um, impacts a lot on food extrusion process, uh, so I put it in a um, FR3 raw material selection. So you want to choose low. Uh, you want to choose uh, materials which has lower fat and protein content, and which has. And you also want to limit the water content in the materials that you choose, and you want to break down the particle as small as possible. Uh, protein and fat, why are they important? Because protein will increase the stiffness of the material, so it's not gonna be that crispy. Um, and pro uh, fat creates slippage, so it's, uh, because of the slippage, the, mm, the materials are not gonna be impacted by the um, screw totally, so it's, it's um, it has less friction, so it's, and it, it it um, it it only gets a limited amount of shear force, so um, you want to decrease the fat and protein as small as possible to increase the efficiency process of food extrusion and water content. Um, so I in, for water content I choose pre-processing manufacturing processes. So sometimes when you're choosing vegetable and plant-based ingredient, it has they have more water content than other starch-based products. So what you do is you um, you make a pre-processing condition. You um, you uh, dry that in a you actually uh, heat it up, heat it a little bit and dry that first so that it reduces the water content. And of course you have to care about the environmental interference. Um, choose an environmental condition which has low low vapor uh, yeah uh, less humidity and refined particle size. That's gonna make the materials more, um, the, uh, the dough more soft and even. And in my design matrix, it has some coupling here. Um, it is because the, the, the last two, it's gonna impact on the, on the fention uh, that I choose. So, for example, to lower um, to lower water injection rate, water injection rate, uh, to lower feed rate, it's going to be impacted by the geometrical shape of the extruder, because yeah, that's going to that's going to um, that's going to determine how much fast how much fast the material is distributed in the barrel, and this one geometrical shape also impacts the screw speed. 
and pre-processing manufacturing parameters. It's, so when you have pre-processing manufacturing condition, it's going to decrease the water injection rate. And the same thing for the chemical formulations. So if you choose materials with less fat and less water content, you're gonna, you don't have to worry about the um, screw type that you're going to be working on. So um, even though I have some coupling here, um, I don't have to worry about it that much because they all are proportional to each other. So even though this one, so like for example, if I, I have preprocessing condition, let's say I dry the material first. So that's just going to decrease the water injection rate. So it doesn't affect my FR2 at all. So all of these are proportional and just making it better. Um, so, so according to what I choose for DP2 and DP3, I can easily adjust the um, my D FR right there. So okay. Thank you for your attention. You could go back to the last slide. I just want to point out one quick thing here, and I want to use the last couple of minutes before we leave to do it. So, so um, the this, mic. yeah, right. Uh, thanks. One uh, uh, just point in English. Uh, so we talk about using the imperative. That's drop the two. That would be the imperative. With the two, it's the infinitive. Minor point, not a big deal, but just sort of to clear that up. The other thing that uh, I wanted to point out is you've got uh, three of these DPs are the same. Now, I, I'm supposing this is some different part of the computer-aided manufacturing each time. But what we should do is indicate that, because otherwise it looks like you're using the same DP four times to satisfy four different FRs. So it's just kind of formatting issues. But uh, I always find the food stuff interesting.